What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the associate collection function. And so with that, we'll just uh, go ahead and get started. So from the project, we will create a new Kotlin file. We will call it associate. And then we will create our main function. And now we'll just do our library.books and then we'll call the associate function. So the purpose of this function is to build an association between a key and a value. And so for this function, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pair data structure. And so what that looks like is we will have a new pair and we will say it dot genres dot first. So we'll get the first genre of the book in the library and then it. So the pair itself is going to contain the genre of the book as a key and then the book itself as the value. And then when we go and do our for each function on top of it, we can do print line with the key and then the value. So we'll update T to be key and then U will be value. So if we go ahead and we run this, you'll see down here that we have business, self-help, politics, all of those. And with that, we only have one book per genre, which if we go back to our library and let's take a look at all of the books in there, you'll notice that there are significantly more than that. So that kind of reveals how the associate function works in that it's going to overwrite values. So the first time that this goes through, and actually we can just do print line and then associate book and we'll just print out the value of it. And then if we run it, you can see that this function runs for every single book in the library, but it only saves the last one that it finds because when there's a conflict with the key, if it already exists in the data structure, it will overwrite it with the, the most current value. That's just the, the one thing to kind of keep in mind when you're using the associate function. It's, it's usually something that you'd want to use if you're expecting that the key is going to be unique to the values themselves. And so in our case with the books, it's not really the case when, when we look at genres, but it at least gets um, gives us a, a good example to work with. So there's another one that we can run though for associate. So kind of like the other functions, um, you can do specialty like subset functions of it. And so there's an associate by, and so this associate by function will take the key that we want. And so we can say it dot genres dot first. And then if we just copy over our for each function from before, and then if we go ahead and run it, you'll see that we get the same output. And so associate by what that's doing is it's just going to take the key that you're defining in this function, so the first genre, and then it's going to take the value, so it, and that's going to be set as a value. So instead of having to create this pair data structure, you just have to define you just have to define what the key is going to be. So that's another example. Um, one more is going to be with the associate with function. And that's going to work 
actually like in it's going to be reversed essentially so if we paste this back in for our for each to to look at what values we're getting getting out if we run the function you'll notice that now our key is the book itself and the value is genre so if you want to use the value that's coming through as the key then you would use associate with if you want to define the key then you would use the associate by and then just the last thing that I will point out with this uh, for any of the associate functions so we'll just come back up here actually we'll just use the the associate by these are going to be so the type of them is going to be a map of genre and then book. So the map data structure, all that's going to give you is kind of how we've already been working with them. You have keys and then you have values. And so the key is going to be whatever is stored on the left side and the value is going to be whatever is on the right side. So that's it. Uh, the associate uh, collection function, it's not really one that I use too often. It's kind of has a limited use case, especially with um, it overwriting the values. So you really have to have that sort of a setup in mind, but it can be useful when you need that specific use case. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep watching more videos in this series, be sure to subscribe. And that is it. I will catch you in the next one.